we just think about New Zealand and Australia, but over the last you know, 15 years, they've both become really important tourism destinations because they are warm, they've got a great landscape, they have plenty of flowers, they've got a really good inn, um, but also they've become a huge destination for students looking for a place to learn English and then go on to do higher education in English. So it's interesting to see how much the world of tourism is trying to reduce the spread in English through you know, how you reach those cities. So can I just kind of tie in a little bit in because you're almost a sort of speaking liaison for the UCP in that respect. Would you want to just tell me a little bit about that, please? Yeah, the English medium instruction is essentially the growing trend, the growing phenomenon all over the world. People with a higher education degrees, uh, they've come here to prove their postgraduate degrees in English now. And there's an interesting stat in the industry that 60% of postgraduate courses across the world now are delivered in English, which, which means the implication for the people delivering those courses who are essentially going to be non-native speakers of English and their students, who may well be non-native English speakers themselves, everybody is getting the whole course in essentially a second language. And that's obviously hugely deficient for us in terms of just playing our higher learning curve. Yeah, I mean, sure, there's another acronym like EMI, and I think there's quite a lot of overlap uh, between the two, but the spirit is essentially very prevalent in certain countries in secondary education, like the speaking ability of primary now, where people are trying to learn the subject in English from the get-go. So rather than learn English and then learn biology in English, uh, they're trying to learn biology in English. And again, the same implications, the same issues, and that's why you get biology teacher who will have biology in English to a group of 14, 15 year old deaf students. Is this just an extension of English as a foreign language or is it content teaching with the added extra of language learning? So we've got two approaches in the industry that really try and break that apart and show some techniques for doing it well by deaf people and some techniques for ESL teaching or dual content teaching. Well, I think the whole area of English as a lingua franca is important. Um, again, the majority of communications, the majority of conversations, the majority of interactions in English throughout the world are now not involving a native speaker of English. So obviously the implication for us teaching in English is what do we correct, what are we trying to aspire to, what should the benchmark for good English be, uh, in particular the vocabulary we use, the grammar, communication skills, if the message is clear between the Japanese engineer and the Norwegian technician, does it matter if the tense is wrong or the pronunciation is a bit different? So again, that issue we address with the Lit Lab Hub over in Norfolk, and we'll be doing a couple more articles on that over the next couple of issues.